Watson. And on behalf of the Center of Excellence for Hospitality Resilience, I am pleased to welcome you to today's webinar on creating budget-friendly events, how to make an indoor COVID event profitable. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is a webinar series intended to support small tourism and hospitality businesses as they navigate these unprecedented times as a result of COVID-19. By exploring topics related to operations, health and safety, marketing, risk management, contingency planning, and innovation, we hope to provide meaningful and relevant insight in relation to current small business issues to help you understand and respond to the changing landscape. This series is brought to you by the Center of Excellence for Hospitality Resilience, a joint initiative of Temple University's School of Sport, Tourism, and Hospitality Management and Temple's Small Business Development Center. This presentation recording and a follow-up document will be sent to all attendees. Um, all attendees have been muted, but we encourage you to post any questions in the chat or Q&A function, and we'll get those answered either uh, right away or at the end of the presentation. So now I'm going to turn the floor over to today's panelist, Christine Cleaver. Thank you, Olivia. Um, so happy new year, happy 2021. I'm so excited. Um, 21 is my favorite number, so I have very high hopes for this year. Um, we have a vaccine, we're starting to roll it out. And, you know, according to all the projections and the readings kind of deep into 2021, um, hopefully we're going to be back meeting with each other. So um, that is, you know, what I'm going to be discussing today. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this, excited for the new year and, you know, excited to uh, be moving forward. So in today's session, we're going to talk about compliance, we're going to talk about budgeting, we're going to talk about some best practices for profit, and then I'll answer any questions. And um, like uh, Olivia said, afterwards, I will send out a document that has a ton of resources in it, templates, um, all sorts of different things that I hope will assist um, with your business. Uh, but, you know, as always, please make sure you're asking questions. I, I, I love to be interactive and to um, kind of address, address what's on your mind. So we all know, um, you know, with compliance, you know, COVID is, a, you know, rapidly evolving. You know, now we have a new variant. So um, everything's changing all the time. So make sure that you know your municipality, your town, your city protocols and you know what what they're saying and when it's effective and, and changing. And with that, I encourage you to also think about um, you know weighing your options, not following not not following the compliance, but um, is it better for you to go to great lengths to do things to become compliant? Or should you take a pause? And it's okay to take a pause. Um, you know, there during this latest shutdown, which was three weeks, even though it was at the, the worst time for hospitality, tourism, restaurant, um, event businesses, some people chose to take a, a pause because, um, you know, meeting the regulations um, can be very costly. So, you know, again, I'm going to talk about this as, and, you know, as we go into this a little bit more, you know, think about what makes the most sense for you. Uh, trust. So with compliance, um, your guests are really putting their trust in you. They are trusting that you're going to follow things in their best interest. So this is their expectation um, and they're, they're giving you that expectation. So if you're not fulfilling that, then their trust level is going to, down and their repeat businesses as well. So, you know, that, that's the big thing that you have to, you know, kind of keep in your head when you're planning, is this going to be a trustworthy behavior? Is this going to be trustworthy that, you know, it'll work? Is this going, you know, those are the things that you have to be thinking kind of when you're going forward and, and when you're planning things. Want to make sure that you have safety protocols in place and that you are letting people know about your safety protocols. This will assist with the trust um, and you know people wanting to come. You know, 
fast ma face masks, you know, even with the vaccine, many of these things are not going to go away for quite some time. Face masks, social distancing, hand washing, the, you know, if you're feeling ill, not actually attending, you know, this is really important that you have safety protocols in place. You are letting people know what's hap what's going on and what's happening, how you're following them, how you're branding them, you know, are you using an app that's having people check in, you know, all of those things um, will assist not only in compliance of, you know, CDC regulations, but also, you know, compliance that your guests are expecting because they are expecting it. When people um, first, you know, travel and, and first go out to an event, there's going to be um, a high level of anxiety in that. So um, it's so, so important that you create that trust and you're, you're creating um, an area where everybody feels safe, um, that they can actually come. Because, you know, say they're going to an educational conference, they're going, you know, to American Heart or a, a doctor's conference, they don't want to be, have so much anxiety that going there is not um, beneficial for them and they're not learning any, anything. So you want to make sure that you're, you're, you have everything in place. And, you know, we always in the hospitality tourism and events area have always kept our, you know, behind the scenes and what happens behind the scenes. Well, now people need to know about what's happening. So even if, you know, in advance you're sharing out photos of what the rooms are going to look like or photos of what your event is going to look like, even if it's done in sketch form, totally fine. That'll give people um, a, a sense of what to expect, but also then a sense of, of trust and, and um, kind of um, ease um, for attending. So with compliant, I just said a few minutes ago, you really need to think about um, the different things that are happening and, and review your inventory of things that you have and what can you repurpose for compliance. Um, I saw this at a restaurant in, in Center City this summer and I, I thought it was, it was a very unique and creative way for them to create individual spaces for their outdoor dining and it's done out of pallets. So, you know, with everything, and I know right now it's hard because it's winter and, you know, people are doing the igloos and they're doing, um, you know, the, the fire pits and, and the heaters, but, you know, what are things that you have in your venue that you can use, you know, your, your table trays or your dividers, can you be using those for queue lines? Um, you know, it, different um, desks and furniture that, you know, once were like the check-in desk, can you use that for, for something? Think of all the different things that you have in your inventory and different ways that you can repurpose them. That is really going to save you in the end, instead of having to buy new things or rent new things in, think about what you have and think about creative ways that, that it can be used. I mean, this is a palette. How many times do you get things on a palette? You know, you can, you know, and again, um, many of these things will take some manpower. So I'm going to go through in a little bit some some tips and tricks on, on manpower. I know it's hard with a lot of things, but there are students that want experiences, you know, freelancers, all of those things are things that potentially you can assist you. But definitely look at your inventory. It's also a great time to take inventory of what you have and make sure your inventory is up to date. So you have inventory of all the different things you have and what are the different ways that you can use them. So gonna go into our, our topic today of budgeting. Um, so gonna go through what I think are some basics, but I always, I, I believe that I, in my whole heart and I teach this in my classes, that these are very foundational things that um, if you're not creating the good foundation, it's just like a house. If you do not create a good foundation, then the house um, is not level and um, it, it's gonna fall apart. So it's really, really important that you create the foundation. So number one, you have to have a mission and a well-stated mission. And your organization should have an, a mission and you should have a mission for the event as well. Um, very important that you have that. That is kind of your barometer. That's what you go back to. Does this meet our mission? Does this um, align with our mission? 
will this foster our, our mission? It's really important that you have that. If you don't have that face, it's really hard to make budgeting decisions without that. You know, many times, and you know, if you're doing a children's event and your event is to foster reading in children and to, um, you know, get a, a book in every household, when, when, you know, sponsorship comes in and I don't know, I, an adult beverage wants to be a sponsor, it doesn't really meet your mission. So it's really important that you establish the mission and everything works for your mission. Same thing with your goals. Um, and I say this because a lot of times, especially in the area we're in right now, where everybody's trying to make things work financially, sometimes people will make decisions off of um, making a profit versus um, will it will it enhance your mission and goals and many times that either gets you in some sort of trouble or it doesn't align properly and that's when you can have PR nightmares or things that just don't align so make sure I, I always put the mission and goals at the top of every budget that I do so I'll have the mission and then I will have the goals for the event so anytime I'm I'm coming to a decision that may be a little rough, I can look at those and say, all right, well, it may or may not align. So, and if I'm I'm on the fence of of it will it will it or will not align, then I will go to my stakeholders and say, what what do you feel about this? You know, th this is my feeling of it aligns but may not align this way. So, it's really a good barometer um, in order for you to make decisions. When you're doing a budget, you, you, you need to use a structured budget format. This is vital so that you always can be reviewing and it is in front of you. I will, um, when I send out the document afterwards, link in um, a, a budget format that is the one that we use to teach our undergraduate curriculum with, and it works very, very well. So you're listing, you know, so you're starting with, um, so first of all, you always want to make sure that the date is on there, that the last updated date. So you know that you are working from the budget that is the, the most up to date, very important. Then, you know, you're starting with your expenses, you know, what is your um, budget amount? Um, what is the actual amount? What's the differential? What are the notes on that differential? And then what are the vendors that were used? The other thing that we also can align with expenses is there are a sponsor or a partner that can cover those expenses and or align, give you in kind, those type things. I put that right in my budget sheet. I kind of make it my wish list of things that helps me um, also to drive what I'm thinking about with sponsorship and, and different areas. That's gonna be really important going forward because um, you know, even though we are in person, events are going to look differently. There's not going to be these big formal, formal dinners for a while. Everything is going to be prepackaged. And, you know, is there a way that you can work with like a hers or an uts to help with that? Or, you know, so there's always different ways, always different things to put in there. Um, it also helps like kind of brainstorming other ideas. So really important that you're using structure. Then, you know, I will, for my revenues, you know, I will do my registrations to date so I know where I'm at and I check that, unfortunately, almost daily, um, but it's a good thing. And then also my sponsors to date and where I'm at and what what's projected. And then I kind of have my my bottom line. I think it's really important that you have those and you're reviewing this so that you have um, different checkpoints and you have different things so you know kind of where you are and where you're going and where you need to be. So it's super, super important that you're revo reviewing historical data. In my classes, I always say you should review five years and then I use the example of we're in Northeast Pennsylvania, what happens in the winter time if you have a, a um, a, an event in January, an annual event in January, it could snow. Well, year one, the budget could look like this. Year two, year three, it snows. Budget could look like this. Well, now it's super important because we've been through 10 months where we've not had anything. So um, I always say five to seven years is a good, a, a good barometer for historical data. Now, if it's a brand new event, 
Do you want to find data for an event that is like yours? Now, no two events are the same. So you want to find something that is, you know, similar to your events and look into, you know, kind of how things went with that event. It's important to see, you know, um, you know, one year I, so this is an example of something that happened to me in my, in my career. Um, I used to produce a sand sculpture and um, this sand sculpture happened in like the June timeframe. It was um, for an event and uh, we would put the, the budget together in January. Well, the pro the cost and, and the sculpture not only had sand, it also had foam in it because it was um, in a facility that had a parking structure underneath. So it couldn't all be sand because of the weight. Well, um, the pri price of oil went up and the price of sand and foam are directly related to that. Early on in my career, did not realize those things. Much better at watching the pipeline and news and all those things now. So when it came to time time for the event, the the budget was completely blown because of those things. So you know those are things that I noted. So I knew going forward that you know, on that particular event, anytime you know past that first year that I did it, I would monitor every two to three weeks what was going on in the price. And my vendors, I think, probably were a little over me at at, at that point, but. They understood why I was doing it and, and what I was looking at. So really important to reviewing, I call the backstory, which is the historical data. So making sure you're having that, making sure you're taking notes. So, you know, if you saw on the previous screen, any notes, I'm always taking notes. Um, my notes columns get, you know, pretty in depth of, you know, this happened or this vendor was not able to, um, you know, give us this product. We had to go to a new vendor all those different things, because while yes, we all hope we can remember those things, we all know um, with this, there's a lot of detail and sometimes those details can be forgotten. So it's really good to you know have those notes. It's really good to, to um, set SMART goals. So meaning that by such and such date, we need this many registrants or by such and such date, we need this much sponsor money or, um, by such and such date, we need this many speakers confirmed. It, you, you need to have those checkpoints so that you are constantly aware what's going on and what's happening. You never wanna go into an event not knowing where you're gonna end up and then, oh, I hope we get 50 more registrants so that we can pay the bills. You don't want that. You want to make sure that you're being very smart with things, especially now because well, yes, um, I, to 2021, we're excited, we're moving forward. There could, we, we don't know, no one knows. So it could be that in two more weeks, we're in another shutdown for a little while, or in two more weeks that, you know, we can do, you know, they're saying fly, go do things, go, you know, forward. So you always want to make sure that you have those checkpoints of, uh, you know, what's happening, what's going on. You can put them in your operational timeline as well but it's really important. I always um, have my checkpoints in my second tab of my budget spreadsheet. So, um, you know, on such and such date, we should be at this number. If we're not at that number, what are we gonna do? Like what's happening? You know, do we need to go to an alternative plan? You know, those are some things that we need, we need to think about. So just, you know, some, some again, with all of this, being really on top of it and really on, on the details. So you want to review the categories in detail and often. So yes, venue, you're going to be in person. But again, uh, six feet, masks, um, you know, social distancing and lines, all of those things. So um, your venue going forward for a while is, while yes, you're going to be meeting in person, you are also still going to have to have some hybrid option. For multiple reasons, people still, you know, there's going to be some people that um, are not comfortable to attend yet, but want to attend. So you have those folks. You also have companies right now until they get back on their feet that travel budgets are um, not necessarily where they were before. So while they want their employees to attend, they may not be able to do that in person yet. So you still with all of these things um, are still gonna need the hybrid option. You're also going to need the hybrid option because if you are at 50 or 25% capacity at your venue, you need that hybrid option in order to make up the revenue. 
So while we don't want to talk, you know, everyone wants to meet in person for for um, the the time being and and you know forthcoming, the hybrid is going to have to be. Um, it, it, it's definitely something that's going to have to be there and something that you really um, you need to think about. I'll be honest, um, prior to COVID, I was doing a bunch of research and um, a, a bunch of um, kind of projections on actually hybrid events being the way to actually increase revenue um, for in-person events, meaning that you're in person, you're at capacity, adding that hybrid in an order to increase your revenue. So um, now it's a necessity. So, you know, definitely. And again, you want to break down um, with your, you know, your budgeting, you know, how many in-person registrants and how many online registrants. And, you know, again, going back to the mission, you know, how are you setting the pricing on those um, so that you're meeting your mission, but also getting people there as well. So staffing is hard right now because, you know, you, you want to, you, everybody wants to get back in the swing of things and you want to hire staff, but it's kind of, you know, the, the walking slow type thing. So with staffing, you know, think about um, freelance staff that's there for a small amount of time. Think about potentially partnering with um, a college program to have some interns. Think about temporary, like, you know, hourly staff. You know, those are some ways for you to be able to gain momentum, staff your events, but not necessarily have, um, you know, the, the overhead for full time staff. I wholeheartedly want you to get there that you have your staff back where they are and as many people as you can, but, um, you know, it's kind of the walk before we run type thing and you know those are some definite ways to help you um, get to where you need to be. Food and beverage. Good so, question. Oh yeah, yes. So back to the first point on the venue, uh, yeah. we have the question, how do you add the same appeal to the virtual side of the hybrid events? Oh, I think I think that's a good one. Um, so I had talked about this in a, another event that I did and you definitely, um, so you need someone overseeing the in-person and someone overseeing the virtual because you need that energy and you need that engagement. And there are, there are ways to do that that are engaging. You know, with different apps, there's breakout rooms, there's different ways that you can meet, um, you know, meet and, and also, you know, kind of do your networking. The other thing is too, it does not always have to be that your hybrid is on like a Zoom platform. You can do it where it's on um, a YouTube um, stream link that people can watch it um, kind of um, at their leisure or when they're able to. That also helps if you have an international conference, um, you know, that you can engage, engage people. But it's, you know, it's important. It's important to pose things. It's important with all these things too, to have a little bit of fun um, with it, you know, so that you're posing some questions that are not completely about what is going on, but, you know, we, I, I did a, an event uh, a, a few weeks ago and we actually um, did a happy moment video every morning and we asked people for the happy moment. People were having their dogs, you know, so there's different ways to do it that it, that is engaging. The big thing is you want to make sure that you are um, providing equal access to the folks um, online and the folks in person, meaning that um, if you're not using an app, uh, you wanna make sure you have some platform where people know who's there and who's attending. So even if they can't connect during the event, they can connect afterwards, meaning, you know, oh, I saw that you were with the Harvest Festival in Indiana. Um, you know, I have some ideas and you wanna encourage those connections. So, you know, those are some things. Um, what I found works really well um, is um, doing like discussion type um, engagement where you're posing a question about something that's going on and people start um, interacting with that question. 
uh, people will not just jump in and interact with each other. Uh, that about 1% of the population will do that. And I, I talk to this about my students all the time. So, but if there's a question or something similar, like, um, you know, and you can even survey your attendees in advance of things that they're looking for. Um, I do this on the first day of class in all my classes. I ask why students are taking this class so that I understand and I can, um, I can actually make things tailored to them. So you can ask attendees, is there something that you know you're you're trying to seek out information on? Those you know those could be you know how are you like a, a, a question posed out to event planners? How are you branding your event? So there's many ways to brand things nowadays. So you know the, that's you know that's something that you know works. Oh, I didn't think about that. You know what? We do this this way. Now in a, in though when every convention I've gone to, those are natural conversations that you, when you're in person. But what I'm finding is if you pose the questions like that, that is helping the interaction more than you know just hey, here's a breakout room. Like, okay, well, if you're doing this virtually, I'll be honest, during the breakout time, I'm probably gonna go let my dog out. I'm gonna change the laundry at my house because I'm at my house. So, but if there is a discussion that I'm interested in, um, you know, that's a, you know, a good way to, to do it. The other thing with um, the interaction also too is gamification. If there's any way that, you know, you can see att different attendees are really involved, you know, Give, you know, giving them a shout out or sending them a small prize is always a fun way um, to do things. And, it, you know, it, it kind of, I, I go with the, um, you know, a lot of those mid-level marketing companies right now are doing the, the Facebook events and when they're tagging each other or, oh yeah, I use that, or that's one of my favorites. Again, um, it's, it's a way to interact. So you have to be on top of that. So your person that's overseeing the virtual hybrid portion of it, they're the ones that, you know, they need to be, you know, watching that. And you need to, you know, if, if you know, one question isn't, isn't necessarily um, jarring engagement, you need to make sure that you have other things that can do or happen. The other thing too, is if there was like a monumental, I don't know, like a piece of information that was given during the in-person, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, in-person actual um, event, and that's something you want to pull out and, hey, what, wasn't this mind-blowing or wasn't this, um, you know, what did you think of this? It's another way, you know, for people to engage uh, and be able to, to talk to each other. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, I'm going to go on now to food and beverage. So food and beverage is going to look differently. It is going to be, um, and I, I use uh, the example, I have a freshman daughter in college and all of their stuff right now is in, in the cafeteria is prepackaged. It is going to be that way for a while. Um, that is a way to, to, it's definitely a way to cut down and also um, definitely hit many compliance areas. So, you know, with that, if that is, if that's, go, if that's the way things are going, you know, how are you handling that? You know, how is the distribution on that? So with that, you know, you staffing, you, you, with all of this, things are, you know, what, what used to be that you needed, you know, 25 staff people in a dining, you, you may not need that anymore. So those folks, not that actual person, but you, then you're allocating those resources out elsewhere. So again, that's why I'm talking about, look at the details of this and be checking it out often. It's really, really important. So you are going to need, because you're, you're, you're doing two things here, you're going to need AV equipment on site and then you're also going to have technology for your folks that are not that are not on site app streaming and they need to work together so the this so i you know for for ever eons and ages i talked about how in an event many times food and beverage is one of your largest um, areas you spend av equipment and technology are now going to take that over and they it, and very rightfully so because um, people, if they're going to come, they want the information, they want the entertainment, that is the most important part. So you need to make sure that is working. You need to make sure it's working with each other, um, you know, seamlessly. So your rehearsals are going to look different than they have in the past because you're going to be doing an in-person rehearsal and making sure that it works with the app and, and the streaming. 
with apps. Uh, the nice part about that is that doesn't have to just be now, you know, for either the day of the event or the three days of your event. The app can actually work in advance and then after um, going on. And I'm saying app in whatever application that you want to use. It could be an app on a phone. It could be a platform, um, you know, on a computer. It can be all of those different things. There's many of them out there. Um, you know, definitely uh, they keep adding amazing and, and, and pretty cool features. Um, and again, when you're thinking about that, you're going to look at it and think, oh, this is expensive. But remember, you're moving things around budgeting wise. So that is where you really need to, again, going to historical data. This is what we did, spent before and this is what we're spending now. And again, in five years, it may be that, you know, things are back to, to where they were. So just think about those things. Uh, your programming and entertainment. So um, you definitely, you know, with this can have a split of people being, um, you know, at your venue, people, um, you know, being brought in live or people being pre-taped. So you have that element of, um, of various programming right now, um, which is which is definitely acceptable. You know, there's a lot of the touring companies that, you know, did all of the touring of the country artists, the rock artists, all those things. They've now taken their facilities and turned them into live studios where people are actually going in and filming things. Um, people want entertainment. It's part of our culture. It's part of our DNA. People want to meet. They want to be entertained. So that is why I have high hopes for the fact that we're going to get back. We're going to get to where we need to be because there is no way this world can function without music, entertainment, conferences, all those things. People crave and want those. It's part of our culture. It's part of our DNA. So with programming and entertainment, now you have various ways that you can do things. It used to be that you would go for an artist or a speaker, and if they weren't available because they couldn't travel to you, it limits you. Well, now not necessarily the case. So as long as you are forthright with your attendees and are saying, you know, you it, when you're doing everything, this person will be live, this person will be pre-taped, this person will be brought to, you know, this person will be brought in virtually. As long as your attendees know that, um, you know, then they know what to expect. So, you know, definitely um, this no longer limits. I actually think this actually broadens for everybody. Your branding and signage is really important um, because you're going to have to do stuff pre, during, and post. Meaning, again, I talked about it before, you know, what are your compliance, what's safety, what's happening, what's going on. You know, again, on site, I had talked about this in a prior um, webinar, when you're moving people from room to room, okay, great, your room's at 25% capacity, but you have four rooms and they move at the same time, that's 100% in the hallway. So you need to think about how you're doing and what and what's going on and how you're moving. So what is the branding? What is the signage? How are you relaying those messages? So, you know, it's, it, it can be, it, it can and should be many different ways. On-site signage, you know, you can use digital signage, you can use, um, you know, app notifications, all of those different things are ways that you can do this. But again, it shouldn't just be, you know, the, the um, core foam signs on an easel, you need to be thinking, um, you know, on two different two different areas. Decor. So it is important that, you know, the it's important that, you know, people are feeling the value of what is going on. So you do have to have decor, you shouldn't go, you shouldn't just say, Nope, you don't need it. If there's a theme and and things, you, you know, you need to make sure that they're feeling it. Now with that, you also need to make sure the people at home are feeling it. So, you know, when you're doing your branding and you're doing your slides, you're doing anything, you know, whatever is around the stage or whatever the stage looks like, you should also be making sure the slides, the backdrops, the backgrounds, all of those things also are um, resembling that. So it all has a cohesive look to it and everybody feels like they're part of it. Attendee experience. I, I talked about this a little bit um, above, but you need to make sure that you are thinking about the design for in person and also online. It's in, it's very, very important. And the attendee experience in person, I think right now is actually going to be the little bit a little bit more difficult than online because again, you know, um, attendee A, attendee B, attendee C, 
how are they moving through their track of your events? You know, are they going to room A and then are they moving on the A schedule, which means that their room ends at 10 and they're moving from 10 to 10.05, B's moving 10.05 to 10.10 and C's moving 10.10 to 10.15. You need to make sure that um, they know, the attendee knows what to expect and where they're going and what's happening. Um, it's going, and it is going to take a lot of pre-knowledge in order for everybody to understand this because everybody that's been to a conference, conference everybody that's been to a concert, they're going to want to go back and do things the way they did it before because they don't know any better. It's the same thing when you're standing in line. That's why now I'm in Target and I make sure my feet are on the six foot mark because I have a million things going on in my head and I will move like I did, did prior to what is going on. And that's not the case. So you need to make sure that you're thinking about those things and so that your attendees understand what's going on. So your, your um, agenda that you're giving them is gonna have to be very detailed so they know and, and what's going on. With that, that is going to take um, some effort and it's going to, you know, you have to think about how you're doing that, you know, how you're doing that in the most cost-effective way. Going back to what I was talking about um, in the first couple of slides, which is that compliancy, what do you have in your inventory that you can use in order to assist with all of that? And it is going to look a little funky at first. You know, there's going to be like, you know, cab shoots. So this is, you know, line A goes here, line B goes here, line C goes here. But I, once people get used to it, um, it will become natural. So, you know, and, and, um, people are it, people are going to want to be there. They're going to want to do this. So they're going to want to actually see what's happening. They're going to want to follow it. So, um, you know, just some kind of food for thought. But again, with all of this, you need to be re reviewing it because you, you you're what you have done in the past. You're going to have to be moving around um, quite a bit. So um, always, always, always have an emergency fund miscellaneous, I call this the, oh, you know what fund, um, but now everyone is calling it an emergency fund. This is uh, your miscellaneous. I always say this should be 10% of your overall budget. That should be your miscellaneous. Um, I will, I'm adamant with, with clients that it has to be 10%. Um, the bonus of that is if you don't use it, you always come in under budget, which is fabulous. When I teach this in my class, I discuss this with my students. It is so paramount now to have this because you don't know, um, you know, emergencies before could have been that, you know, there was a permit that you didn't know about that you should have applied for that you now have to apply for. Now it could be, oh, you know what, the event has to be moved six months. Okay, well, there's going to be some expense in that in that movement. So make sure you have the emergency fund. It's, it's super critical that you have that. So some best practices when you're when you're going through these things is to think of this versus that and what makes the most sense. And again, your your mission and your budget and your goals will um, they're going to be the things that actually drive that. So, you know, does does a swag bag make sense or does it make more sense for you to put um, money into um, technology or money into the movement or the attendee experience. Um, you know, think about that. Yes, it's great, but I'll be honest, those bags and all that stuff I get end up in my office at school and I, they're, they're literally, uh, I, Professor Sheridan that I, I, that I work with um, every year does a garage sale at his house and he actually uses all those bags. That's what he, he gives everybody, um, you know, your stuff goes in one of those bags. It's a really awesome, sustainable thing to do. And I, I'm very proud of him for that. But, you know, think about those things. Are there things that are not necessary? Many times there are. So just think about what is necessary versus the on top. Now, I am not saying do away with all on top things, but for the time being, in order to make your event profitable, really think about practicality of what works and what is the you know, best thing um, for your event. So definitely sponsors. Um, sponsors are definitely welcome. You're gonna have to think about this differently because sponsor activation is going to be very unique now. You know, it used to be that you have your sponsor on site and you're, you know, people are walking up and discussing things. Well, now it's going to be, 
you know, six feet, like, you know, that's kind of hard to have a conversation. So are you doing some sort of scanning method where someone is interested and their badge gets scanned and they're getting sent information? If so, that is a, a whole different type of sponsor interaction where the sponsor can interact with the individual for a longer period of time. So really think about um, your sponsor packets and what you're doing and your sponsor packages and you, they can't be the standard packages that they were before. So really need to think about that. And then how are you also then um, um, engaging that, spon that sponsor in the hybrid format? So um, definitely this is, this is the area I am super excited about because this is that whole innovation new ways, new products, new things that can be done. Um, but definitely when you're thinking about this, you can't think about the standard of, you know, they're on site with a booth. It has to be, you know, something else, you know, maybe in the beginning of a session, you know, it, again, maybe that sponsor is brought in, you know, for those tracks in, in group B, why group A is moving, that sponsor is actually, you know, up in the front of the room and they're talking and they're doing some sort of interaction. They're talking about their product, you know, that type thing that, that really, um, you know, those are some ways that you can get that interaction um, that is going to be in a, a different but um, effective format. The other thing is product demonstration. So, you know, th this is a, another thing, and this actually lends itself really well to, to both online and in person because, you know, you're, you're doing, you know, different things, you know, it, it, say it's a, a book conference, you know, someone can come in talking about the, the different ways, you know, audio, um, ebook, um, regular book, you know, th the different ways to use them, you know, again, going, going back to the previous slide, these are going to be different ways um, of actually um, where it's a, it's a lower fee because they're doing a, a, a one-time demonstration versus a sponsor that will be, you know, kind of across platform. So just different, different things to think about, you know, kind of going, going forward. Sorry, I'm just trying to, and then I, I talk about this as the mind blowing thing, um, unique attendee experiences. So this is going to be a huge one because people are looking for unique ways. I mean, just think about, um, I don't know, people that are, are making the cocoa bombs and um, you know, the different things they're, they're doing with that. There's different unique um, attendee experiences that you can actually put in place and actually charge for. Um, and, and, you know, that you can do online ones, you can also do in person ones. So online, for example, you could bring in, you know, a chef that is doing um, a cooking class for, um, you know, some of the the concessions and things that you have um, on, you know, that you have in person. So there's different ways that you can do this and people are looking for unique things. I know since, since all of this has happened, we have taken online painting courses, we have made cocoa bombs, we have, uh, we have done, you know, the chef tutorials, all, all very unique things, but all things that are interactive. So they're definitely, this is an area again with the innovation that I keep talking about that you have to think of unique things that really um, are beneficial for your employees. You know, it, is there, um, you know, kind of a, um, you know, a question round, you know, with your stakeholders, your board of directors that, a, that an attendee could be involved in. So just all sorts of different things that you can think about and, you know, people are looking for experiences right now. If anything on the back end of all of this that is going to happen is it's going to be less um, tactile stuff and more experiences. People are going to be craving experiences. So, you know, the, you know again, it, it just like the milk and cookies with Santa, you know, people were doing those virtual. Well, you know, you could do virtual. You also could do, you know, look at, look at the way that everybody was doing photos with Santa now. So there's all sorts of different ways and different things that you can kind of um, put together. And these are all things that will assist you in the profitability of your event. So that is kind of my overview today. And I wanted to leave, I'm sorry, I'm trying to watch my watch here. I wanted to leave some time for some questions, um, just because I know it was uh, a lot. And, um, you know, I, I just want to make sure that if there's anything anybody has or anything anybody wants to inquire about, um, you know, would love to talk, talk through. Thank you, Christine. 
Um, while everyone thinks about their questions, and again, please feel free to put them either in the Q&A function or in the chat box, I'm also going to put some uh, resources in this chat box as well. So the first one is a link to a survey that we would love for um, everyone to take. It uh, is for the Small Business Administration and it allows us to continue hosting these webinars at no cost. So that is what that first link is there. And let's see, our first question here is, um, in Philadelphia, where are people allowed to have in-person events? Well, un until, um, until January 15th, they, they are not. So we're hoping, again, that's why in the very beginning, I, I said, look at your municipality and where you're at as to where um, and what's going on. Hopefully, fingers crossed, as of the 15th, um, I believe it is supposed to go to 25% capacity and then to 50. So um, hoping as of the 15th, I'm hoping for the 15th that regulations are lifted for so many reasons. Uh, my daughter is in college, so I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, there's all sorts of regular, so she can have some in-person classes and all sorts of things. But um, again, you need to watch where you're at and what's going on as to, you know, what the capacities are. But right now there, there is no in-person events. But again, it's 2021 and we're gonna get there. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be anything but excited and positive. 21 is my favorite number. It's my it's my birth part of my birth date. So um, I just feel like um, it's lucky. It's lucky 21. I feel like we're going to get there. I think we just have to, you know, we just have to be a, a, a little patient. But again, using our innovative brain to to create some amazing things. Yeah. Um, we, there's a so we have a question. Is there a class on branding only? So I am going to put a couple other resources in the chat box. Um, one is to pr previous webinars, and some of those webinars do touch on branding, um, and also to the Small Business Center's uh, website, which will always keep you updated on any future um, brandings or webinars or modules that you can check out to see if there's any that are specific to something you're looking for. So this is, um, there's one link there. And, you know, definitely thank you for those, you know, all of that feedback, because as we're putting any and more of the these sessions together, it's always good for us to know, um, you know, what what you're thinking, what you're needing, all of those things. So if branding is something that you're interested in that, you know, definitely something we can think about going forward. And I know Temple's um, SBDC does uh, will connect you with a consultant. So if you have some specific branding work you'd like to do, um, you should definitely reach out to them and uh, and kind of set up a meeting there. Any other questions we have about today's webinar? Well, we'll stick around for a little bit to answer yeah. any further questions, but if anyone needs to um, get on with their day, we totally understand that. And we thank you all again so much for joining us here today.